Uh, letter to the Post Bulletin, um, local sheriff's bias is showing. Uh, local county sheriff's bias on display and harmful to community. Recently, Dodge County Sheriff Scott Rose submitted a concerning post on the county's public social media platform. In it, Rose minimized uh, the deaths of black men at the hands of law enforcement officers and issued thinly veiled threats of withholding officers to help surrounding communities in need. Perhaps most alarming was when Rose went as far um, as to state that the death of George Floyd was due to Floyd's own actions and not the officer's knee on his neck. Rose has drawn conclusions on a trial that has yet to take place. In a time where many are focused on listening, learning, and understanding their own dangerous racial biases, Rose shows no shame in proudly displaying his own. In doing so, he is further marginalizing many in the community he is charged to serve. Not only that, but he perpetuates the dangerously racist undertones of the law and order chant that has destroyed communities and killed our black neighbors for decades. And he is doing so on the threshold of what is sure to be a very tumultuous next several months. Personal biases rooted in racism have no place in our communities and certainly not from elected law enforcement officers. As a community, we must demand better from those who are sworn to serve and protect us all, protect us, all of us. As it has to start here in our small communities, we simply cannot stand for this. We must hold people like Scott Rose accountable for his words and biases. Annie Johnson of Orinoco. I want to say, um, going into this, a few things. I reached out to both Scott and Annie. Um, Annie did write in, uh, which I'll read at the end of, of everything. She'll have the final word. I did reach out to Scott also, and he um, asked for a rain check. And so that's where that's at. I also want to preface this with, um, I know Scott. I've worked with Scott I, on a lot of distracted driving issues. I've had him on the podcast, on my other podcast. And um, so I have what might be considered bias, and I want to ask the four of you to make sure that I have that in check. I don't think that I do because I do look at things, including the death of my daughter, completely unbiasedly and look at truth and fact. Um, but I want to preface it with that. This show is designed to give opinions. This is not to say that it is truth. It's not investigative or anything like that. But we will share our opinions. And mine is also valid. But it also might be bias. And I might not even notice it. So I want to preface with that. I'll jump on this grenade, I guess. <laughs> you know, he, Scott Sheriff Rose references the autopsy. And... The autopsy was done by a medical examiner. Should be unbiased. And read the autopsy. He had deadly amounts of multiple narcotics in his system. He couldn't breathe before he even... He said he couldn't breathe before he was even taken out of the squad car. Those are facts. If you want to pull the... Those are the science things. Believe in science. That's what the autopsy report has said. He is just reiterating that. And the the writer says, well, they haven't even done the, the trial yet, the investigation. Well, Scott's a law enforcement officer. His background is investigation and interpreting these things. Interpreting I, 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 I want to pause you there. He did say that that there hasn't been a trial yet. So Correct. I, I mm -hmm. think that was a little bit misconstrued, in my opinion, that he um, – made this comment that was a, a statement of fact, I, I don't think that's accurate personally. I think that he made it very clear that, hey, this hasn't gone to trial yet. Let's let that happen. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, last summer with the campaigns, I was raked over the coals by a few people about this because it was a huge issue. And the the Black Lives Matter movement, I agree that things need to change, and I wholeheartedly agree that our law enforcement needs to be held accountable, and they need to be accountable in 
and remove the bad cops and stop protecting the bad cops. And that, I think, goes to the unions. But you need to, everybody needs to pull their biases out and look at the facts of the case. And um, do things need to change? Absolutely. But I personally, I don't agree with the flag that they're flying under. You're, you're putting somebody on a pedestal that is not a good person or ha- didn't have the history of being a good person in his community. There's better case studies to use for your cause than George Floyd. Um, George, George Floyd was, um, if memory serves, please people, you know, we say it all the time on the show, fact check, go do your own absolutely. research. But I believe it's a, a, a fact that he was convicted of um, assault on a pregnant woman and was holding a gun to her her belly um, and threatened to kill the baby by by gunpoint. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's better ways to get your point across than to use somebody with such a horrible record that he had. So, And that's my opinion. Like Matt said, we're all about our opinions. Um, and... You know, this gal took what he said maybe out of context. I don't know. Um, he's trying to, well, I'm not sure. I can't assume what Scott's intentions are with, with his post, but, yeah. I just think there's a sensitivity issue. That's mm-hmm. just how I'm going to say it. When I read it, I just thought, you know, I always agree that everybody has the right to their opinion. But, again, you know, you are serving your people. And these are your people, and you're saying these things about your people and your community. And the George Floyd thing's quite sensitive right now. The trial hasn't even occurred. There's a lot of people with different opinions and different feelings and emotions, deep emotions that are tied to that case. And so my personal opinion is think before you speak. And if you decide to go ahead and do that, then be held accountable for your words and actions, just how we stated before. I think that he's reaping that right now. I don't disagree with that. Uh, uh, I will say, though, that I don't think... um, So there's something that I made a promise in that I was going to do my best not to rage bait. And I think that um, there's a little bit of that that's happening on both sides of what people would call the political aisle. There's a lot of rage baiting. And it doesn't seem to matter... um, whether the, the the truth or the fact is is that was the intention, but you know maybe there was a little bait in there uh, from right. Scott's post. I don't know. I don't know his intention. I, I haven't been able to ask him. Um, and it is challenging. Would you you know if he was able to defend his words right now? If he was able to give us a statement, it'd make. I think everything a lot easier for us right now. You know, you think about it, we're trying to read into what he was trying to get across. We're trying to figure out what his intentions were or are. And the fact of the matter is he's the only one that can answer for that. So, and he's not ready to do so right now. So well, I'm not sure I would say he's not ready. He's out of town at the moment and in things and on his way back to my understanding. Um, But I think the reality is, is this, when I got into doing, when I, settle basically when i said yes to the public space um all those years ago when my daughter died i said that i'm going to do this and i don't give a flying frack what people say how i do it Mm -hmm. okay and i've i've been in front of hundreds of thousands of people over the years and i've done it the same way every single time and it is very different than the way everybody else does it plain and simple and it is not rage bait. It does not feel sorry for me. It is not any of those types of things. And with that said, that has left me open to I'm doing it wrong. And all that kind of criticism. And I had to say, and I still have to say, I don't care. And I think that's what we need to do. I think that we need to go out and say, I'm sorry that you took it the wrong way. But this is my opinion. This is... And own it. And own it. Yeah. I think like Harmony said, everybody's very sensitive about everything. And, you know... How I do we this, get that way, though? You know, it's frustrating. I think that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah. 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 A special. Yeah. Might be <laughs> too. Yeah. I think every life matters. If white lives matter, black lives matter, Chinese lives matter. Everyone does. And it's so such a hot item right now and so anything that probably maybe wouldn't even get looked at before is now just whoa under the microscope like everything's under scrutiny yes so something that maybe 
was innocently said, not said, his opinion, not his opinion. It's definitely being micromanaged and micro looked at right now. And people are taking things out of context. Yes, I would and, agree. And that's the problem. In, in like in, intent is important. In do your research. Yeah. And, and some stuff that happened to me last year, I left the posts up to say, if you want to find out the truth, go read the original posts mm -hmm. and see that these things were taken out of context. That's the problem. And yeah. the media isn't helping no. any of this. No. I intent is also an issue. What's the intent of it, of whether it's Scott's post or this letter? Did, did, what's the intent? Mm -hmm. uh, do you intend to harm? I'm going to bring up a couple of things right now. One is, is I reached out to some of my friends of, of of different backgrounds let's just put it that way and several of them and i got their advice on this particular um thing and they sent me a whole list of things they sent me videos um you know denzel washington videos morgan freeman videos um some other prominent you know people come on craig it was <laughs> sailing. this is okay. this was going I'm this was going well <laughs> Next subject. We're on the right track. <laughs> yeah, <dollars>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so they're like, well, here's really the reality. I, I worked, I, I hired people of different cultures in, in my business in the past. Um, so I, you know, I understand that there's some things that are sensitive and, um, but so really the short version here that I want to do is, is they said, if you do anything, um, this Don Lemon interview with Morgan Freeman. And um, I'm going to read that right now, I think, before we go any further. I, I, I was really fascinated by um, some of these videos that they sent and some of these really prominent black people, that they what they say about this and what they've mm -hmm. been saying for a really long time, quite honestly. I mean, um, Malcolm X, they sent me some Malcolm X stuff. They, I, I mean, I, I was pretty... I'm like, I, we, we, would, we could literally spend an hour on the stuff that they sent me. But here's Don Lemon of CNN. He says, and, and, and I want to say this too, I took this off of CNN.com um, transcript site. So this is directly from their transcripts. So Don Lemon said, um, so can I go back to, because I thought you said, what you said was fascinating, because you called it bull when you said people can't pull themselves up. Do you think that race plays a part in wealth distribution or either a mindset that you can't? And Freeman interrupts and says, today, question mark. And Don Lemon says, yes. And Morgan Freeman says, no. And then Don Lemon says, you don't? Morgan Freeman says, no, I don't. I don't. You and I were proof, Morgan Freeman says. Why would race have anything to do with it? Put your mind to what you want to do and go for that. It's kind of like religion to me. It's a good excuse for not getting there. Don Lemon said, um, you, you know, I said, this will probably get me in trouble, but I, but, but I said to some of my colleagues recently, so I know that it's an issue. But I've been, it seems like every single day on television I'm talking about race, and it's because of the news cycle. And it's in the news. But sometimes I get so tired of talking about it, I want to, I want to just go this over. Can we move on? Morgan Freeman says, and if you talk about it, it exists. Don Lemon says, right. Morgan Freeman closes with, it's not like it exists and we refuse to talk about it, but making it a bigger issue than it needs to be is the problem here. That's how that ends. It's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Morgan Freeman, I actually read that, heard that. Um, Morgan Freeman right now has some amazing quotes and memes whatever you want to call it and it's it's inspiring i mean his page right now is amazing too. is it yeah it really is and it's not my normal typical memes that i post but it's it's very meaty and it's great he's very outspoken with it and he's not the only one no no not, denzel washington there was a ton of Den denzel washington stuff mm -hmm. that that a uh, couple people had sent me um 
and I had sat down with some some friends last year too of of different backgrounds and we're we're really somber about this. I want to just interject that right now, and I think that's a good <laughs> sign. I, I think that I, I was worried about how this would would go. To be perfectly honest, because it's so heavy, and I, I don't mean worried in the sense of like we're going to say something stupid or whatever else. I mean just worried in the sense that it might be taken out of context. Right. Um, and I think it's really important for people right now that are 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 watching or listening. The intent here is, I asked a I, I asked a person to be here today that would that don't that don't look like us and they didn't want to be and i i think that's important to say that i did invite some people to be here um that would understand this culture better um but one of the statements that i received back was um we don't need to talk about it because the more we talk about it the more it exists and that's exactly why i chose morgan freeman's mm -hmm today it's heavy i think the reason why i'm being so quiet is because i ultimately want to give it the respect that it deserves i mean he said it i guess i'm living in this world i'm 45 years old and i'm still questioning why we are judging people by the color of their skin and their cultures maybe i'm just being naive i don't know i'm just really bothered by that how we're still talking about it i don't understand whether you know somebody's African American or white or Chinese or Indian, why we were making such big things about this? They're, we're all the same inside. This is my spiritual side coming out. I'm like, we only look different on the outside. We a lot of us have the same goals and ambitions and um, spirituality and this and that. And, we, and it's like to me because I I just I love hearing other people's perspective. I love meeting people from different cultures because I just feel like that I'm just getting so much information. I'm learning so much more. It just bothers me and I'm just quite sensitive to it. So I think I was quiet because I was just like, you know, Morgan Freeman hit it on the, you know, the nail on the head. It's like, why are we still talking about this? Why is it even still an issue? That bothers me so much. I uh, off that we are all the same and inside too. We have the same goals, but we also have the same worries and the same mm -hmm. issues and the same fears. Yes. Mm -hmm. So being judged um, is just so huge. The fear of failure, the things that keep us down, the that's all the same too. So whether it's, there's just so much to go on about that. And what I will say just to end it is to judge someone is to be human, but to share your opinion is about class. You know, it depends. And what I mean by that is we're all human. We're all, you know, we, we've been conditioned. It's just kind of that world we tend to, even when we're not being aware of it, we're judging things or judging people. And it's just really about, you know, we're all entitled to that, but it's about when you start verbally sharing that opinion and you start going on media, you know, and social media and you're talking about it, then you just start have to question it. I mean, we're human. We all make mistakes. But at the same time, I think we need to sort of embrace that, you know, again, that we all are human, as Kayla was stating, we all have the same concerns. I think that's just human nature of judging somebody when you first meet them. I mean, go back to the caveman. You're judging somebody to protect yourself. You know, survival. Survival. Okay. Um, but it's how you use that judgment that I think determines a relationship with other people. Mm. So uh, public things, too, when you choose to enter into the public sphere and you make the decision that things are going to be public and people will be able to see what you're doing and saying, your judgment, that that fear of judgment also is altered. And you, mm -hmm. your intent mm -hmm. and what you put out mm -hmm. there also, you <clears throat> made the decision that you were going to be public. And you then accepted that people will be judging you. So mm -hmm, your mm -hmm. intent with what you put out and you say and your actions, you know that you have to make a better call. So then you you bring it, you let it go. You're okay. You're open to judgment now. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. it, it, that's a really good point, and that's so, so accurate, super accurate. Um, I want to. Let's talk about my logo, and this is part of the story. I had had this thought, and Lisa, you've heard this. I've done this live um, in in front of a live audience, and you've heard this. But m my circles. So my logos are circles. Remember this? Yep. Yeah, you were ago. there. Yeah. Last week. 
Um, and while it ended up the circle logo thing, it ended up by accident. It actually is, it, it's a large part of my philosophy. And that philosophy is, and I've said this in many, many different speeches, but my philosophy is, is that we, we make and create these circles and we do that to block people out and block things out. And that's, I mean, it's just nature. What I wanted to do was I wanted to draw a bigger circle around your circle and then now include you. And it doesn't doesn't matter. And I and I say this: it doesn't matter if you're if you're Democrat or Republican or Independent or Libertarian or Black or White or mm-hmm. Yellow or it, it doesn't matter. I don't care. It's about Stephen Covey's. He says we need to seek to understand first and then be understood. And I might be paraphrasing that, but he said it's very close to what he said. And that's it. That's so true. And that's my philosophy. And 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 as soon as we understand that, we don't put people in those places and those labels, we will then realize that everybody's human and there's not all these different circles and there's not all these different classes and there's not all these different races and there's not all these different things, but it is actually that we are all human beings and we do have all those same fears. We are the same on the inside. We do want, essentially, we want to be able to do our thing as long as our thing is not harming other people. That is, doesn't matter our religion it doesn't matter that's really the nuts and bolts of it and that's exactly the point of my circle logos is that everybody's included i didn't ask mm-hmm. harmony her political view i didn't ask kayla as a guess what your political view is i i didn't it doesn't matter that's how we learn uh, what's your political view don't say it you don't need to i don't know it doesn't matter that's the point right <laughs> the point is, is we're trying to understand that's just it, you know, uh, and I think that's so important. If everybody thought the same, it wouldn't be very. It would be a very boring world, wouldn't it? And boring. I, the and show would be too. It would be right. <laughs> and I believe, and I hope I get this right, but I believe Maya Angelou said something: we're more alike than we are different. Yes, you know. Mm-hmm. And just adding to that, if we just take the time and be patient, and you know, get to know somebody instead of judging them right off, I think they would find that to be true. Maya Angelou also said, do the best you can until you know better. And then when you know better, do better. I love that. And that's super important too. Hmm. We're going to give Annie the last word now. Sure. I do appreciate, um, all the people that I reached out to and the advice that I got to talk about this. And I appreciate Annie sending in her statement as well. And it reads, All I really need to say about this is that this, my letter, is anti-racism in action. You shouldn't need to hear me say that I am vehemently not a cop hater or that I was brought up as a conservative in a tiny rural town. Although both of those things are true about me, they miss the point. It should have been Trayvon or Tamir or Freddie or Sandra or Philando or Elijah or Ahmad or Brianna or Michael or, but it was George. I struggle with why it took me so long to become actively anti-racist. I really do. That why has my com, that why has many complex answers. I settle now on the On that, perhaps, it took me watching my children see a man who looks just like their daddy suffocate to death under the knee of a police officer for me to start asking the really hard questions. What is the truth in all of this? What's really happening here? So I dug in. I've read and listened and asked and watched and learned. I tore down old biases and looked through a new lens. And that was true without a single shred of credible doubt is that racism, as it has always been, is rampant and it is everywhere. Once we accept that truth, we have conscious decisions to make. We can, make, we can choose to actively engage in racism, which most people do not choose. We can stay in our lane, stay quiet, comfortable, and be complicit. Or we can choose to be actively anti-racist and work every single day to ensure that we won't stand by and accept racism in any form from any person, group, institution, or system. 
I understand that there will be arguments about whether what the sheriff posted on the public community page was rooted in racism or not. Spoiler alert, it was. But that is simply reflective of the extreme amount of work that needs to be done in this space by almost everybody. Above all that noise, though, what I want most of all, what I want most out of all of this is to be an example of what it looks like to commit to and practice anti-racism. No matter how uncomfortable that might get. And that is Annie Johnson's statement. She asked me to um, also include a couple of different quotes, and I'm going to only include one of them. Uh, Austin Channing Brown said, I need a love that is troubled by injustice, a love that is provoked by anger when black folks, including our children, lie dead in the streets, a love that can no longer be concerned with tone because it is concerned with life, a love that has no tolerance for hate, no excuses for racist decisions, no contentment in the status quo. I need a love that is fierce, in its resilience and sacrifice, I need a love that chooses justice. I'm going to not ask you to comment on any of this, but I am going to say um, that those are opinions of Annie Johnson and of... Um, let me pull up his name so I don't get it wrong at all. Austin Channing Brown. That is not my opinion. That is not Craig's, Kayla's, Harmony's, or Lisa's. We already weighed in on our opinions. But I will say this. We're going to dig into that a little bit more in some of these things that I have really uncovered in investigating this. And we'll talk about some other articles in the coming weeks. So something to look forward to. That was heavy. Yeah. Very. That was that felt very heavy, I'm going to say. And rightfully so, it should feel heavy. It should. should be, and I hope that it weighs on people's hearts and minds as much as I believe it has on ours. I feel like our community, though, I will say, and I want to say the name specifically, but I went into a store the other day, and there's a lot of um, Black Lives Matter stuff, and every day is black, and it, it was almost anti-racist. And it wasn't. It, you was deal. almost racist. You mean? It was almost. Not anti-racist. It was almost racist. I guess. Yeah. It Is was, that what you're saying? Yeah. It, it, there wouldn't be that section of the store in our community that was White Lives Matter or every. I mean, I do. There was baby mitt. There was baby bibs. There was baby this. It was like it was crazy that I was actually seeing this in a store in Rochester, Minnesota, of all this black stuff. And I just couldn't believe it. And all I really I'll, was. And all I'll say about that is if you're seeing something like that on Baby Bibs, and what and this is another podcast, but the, yeah. I'm, the word yeah. that comes to mind is conditioning. Exactly. Hey, a lot of people have asked how they can support the work we're doing here at Matt Logan Speaks. Well, you see this hammer that I got in my hand? It's pretty big. All you have to do is hammer the share button. Go ahead and hammer out a comment to us. Go ahead and hammer the like button. Go ahead and hammer the subscription button. Go ahead and hammer the notification bell so that when we have new content up, you're the first to know about it. We really appreciate the comments, shares, likes, because you know what? That's the best way you can support us because the algorithms on all these fancy computers, that's what they need. We appreciate it.